Hey, what's up, what's up, everybody? All right, this is Chef again, and we're going to talk about the market today, right? So uh, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can and uh, try to provide a little more value for you guys as to what is going on in the market um, just by showing you some of these charts and uh, what we've been talking about in the past, okay? So uh, I think the biggest question now is that everybody's asking and everybody's talking about is if the bottom is in, right? Uh, everybody's wondering, like, is this the bottom? And people are saying that it is the bottom. Other people are saying that we're not. It's just another uh, another reason to enter a short position. We're entering these midterms. We um, saw a lot of volume coming in. We saw a lot of buying pressure and, uh, you know, so many things. And uh, ultimately is what does the chart say, okay? Not only what does the chart say, but what kind of trader are you? Are you a scalper that is only trading on five minute time frames and one minute time frames that come in and out of a trade? Then you shouldn't worry about if we're bearish or bullish, right? You shouldn't be the one saying that, oh, we have this and we have that, right? You should worry about the one minute time frame and say that I've made money here and I'm walking out on a green note. Uh, or you got stopped out. Simple, right? Keep life so simple. Um, and uh, don't worry about what people are talking about. Don't worry about what they're uh, saying. And, you know, who cares what's going on, right? Especially if you're a one-minute trader. Now, if you're a short-term swing trader, then for sure, you got to be able to look at the longer, uh, bigger picture. If you are an investor, you're definitely um, looking at uh, starting to buy some shares on companies that have value. So there's a lot of things that you can do. And certain times is where you should worry and shouldn't worry about what people are saying, um, but more worry about the time frame that fits you best in order for you to actually day trade and grow your account, right? Because that's the whole purpose. We want to grow our accounts by uh, trading these revolving doors of buying and selling stocks. That's what we do, whether option chains or Bitcoin or Forex, we are here to legit make money on smaller time frames. Like, that's it, right? Um, uh, but anyways, let's look at this chart and let's see what it says, right? So right now, like, what I have charted is these two two lines down here at the bottom. I have a yellow and a blue. And then I have a blue one from the top from that 48.25, right? Uh, this is the market ES, the S&P 500. This is the futures. Uh, the one thing that I talked about in the beginning of the year um, it's the movement to the downside, right? I, I've always wanted to buy the dip down here. I, I saw a lot of dips that had value. I, I was able to catch a lot of the dips, but I was also able to catch a lot of the put side. Not much on the put side for me, just because that's not the kind of trader that I am. Um, but I do take advantage of the green trades, the green breakouts. Um, so I did trade a lot of calls, um, but the put side was mainly SPX, where <laughs> you can make huge percentages on ODTEs, right? which they're a higher risk, but either way, uh, they still made a lot of money. Um, but on the way down, um, I did give you guys a guidance as to where the pieces were going to be dropping. And I explained the public participation phase. If you guys don't know, all you guys got to do is go search on the YouTube channel for conservative collectors where you're watching this video specifically. Uh, and then go look at all the previous ones, the weekly, uh, the weekly uh, videos where it kind of just explains everything, right? So this here is your public participation phase. During the public participation phase, you don't get a lot of bases that are called uh, demand. The demand comes on bigger bases that uh, create ranges, which is something like this. And uh, here's your slowdown, here's your pop, here's your drop, and then here's your pop again with a proper breakout here. That's why I have those two blue circles right there, okay? Um, and then that is right below and above the COVID drop, right? This is where we dropped from COVID and we had that nasty sell-off way down here. Uh, and that is what everybody is talking about. They're saying, oh, we're going to go to COVID lows, right? Well, the first COVID low is here. Uh, the second one is going to be here. This is the drop of COVID and this is the drop before COVID. Right when COVID started, this is what happened. And it snapped everything back down. And then from there, we've just been bullish ever since. So it was the greatest opportunity and greatest dip by that uh, investors invested in, so they made tons of money uh, that uh, that basically year and a half, right? But also a lot of people lost money within this like 
uh, the first like month and a half or something like that. I remember that I was trading during that time and it was pretty intense. Uh, yes, I lost a lot of money too. <laughs> so, um, but I also made good money too. Uh, but either way, um, we, this is the only base that we have that's called demand. Other than that, below that on the staircase pattern on a public participation phase, you really don't get a lot of demand other than those like quick bounces that um, sometimes the retests don't really play out as, as they should. The difference now is that we are retesting this level and we did retest it actually overnight. We actually dropped into that 35 right here. So if I go on the smaller time frame, I'm gonna go on the four hour. Uh, you can see that we we tapped it right there, that 35. Uh, we came all the way down uh, overnight uh, and then opened, I believe, down here at this like 3520. And then we ran that whole day with some aggressive volume. Okay, this is the most aggressive volume I have seen since the beginning of the year. And that's what caught my attention the most. This year was my my uh, curiosity, this this brought so much curiosity to me um, as to what was going to happen next uh, last week. Everybody saw this huge candle and everybody was expecting a bull run continuation. Some people swung calls, some people swung puts, made money both ways because we opened green and we closed red. So technically it got that nice pullback that it needed. It got that run up, it got that drop down again. And then we're we're green again with some good volume again. Now, some people are just going to tell you that it's going to be a reason to enter another put play. They're holding it for midterms. We're, we're running up into midterms. We're, we're this, we're that. And uh, it's just another reason for us to go bearish long term. And, and, and just so many talks of this, this, and that, right? Well, who cares, right? The chart right here shows that there was tons of volume, okay? Here's your pullback. Here's your run up. Here's your pullback. Here's your run up, right? What's next? Pullback, right? What's next after that? Run up. Does it have to happen that way? The answer is no. Does it have to pull back? The answer is no. This thing can gap down all the way to 36 if it wanted to. This thing can gap up to 39.50 if it wanted to. This market will rip your face upside and downside. It doesn't matter which side, but it will rip your face if you stay biased, right? And by that, I mean that sometimes we as traders say, well, that's just a, we're at supply, guys. We're at resistance, so let's enter puts. And then by the time it breaks above, your, your reaction will say, well, I'm still going to hold mine because we're in a bearish market, right? Some will say, well, well, we're in a bearish market, so why are you going bullish? Well, remember that if we're trading on a smaller time frame, we're here to take those green candles, whether we're in a bullish market or bearish market. Same as, as the put side, whether we're in a bullish or a bearish market, we're taking those puts, right? On the break above, on the break below, whatever level, whatever flag, whatever pattern, that's what we are doing as day traders, okay? So uh, just a, just a, a reminder that uh, that previous week we had massive volume and then come again this Friday again, we had some great volume as well, right? So pointing that out and give you guys a, a little perspective into that smaller time frame versus this weekly time frame. But again, uh, the previous week to show you that there was a nice doji candle. It's an awkwardly doji, weird looking uh, doji candle down here. But again, it's on the retest, right? Which what we want to see here is for this to actually just stay above these levels right here. This is the major thing because what happens when you get a retest of a base of an accumulation phase, you, you we tend to uh, build on top of it or inside of it. In this case, we're right on top and we're building demand on top of a previous demand. So considering this a retest on the bigger time frame can literally give this a nice push into the end of the year right there, right? So that's why I drew that trend line just so you guys can have an idea into that 4K. Now, do we have to uh, hit that by the end of the year? The answer is no. Again, I'm going to come tell you that this can change instantly everything that i just say can change instantly if this thing breaks below that 3580 once we start cracking below 3580 um let, let's just say this week all the earnings go bad and everything just drops and collapses to the floor then there's a higher probability that 3580 will break and then we'll have that conversation about coming down to this 3520 why 3520 because that is the last piece right here 
uh, of this demand, right? Technically, it should be around 3280 uh, and 3260, but most people are going to target that 3200 um, for ES and basically SPY 320, right? But until then, uh, I don't need that conversation and uh, we're not there yet. So right now I'm giving you this conversation, um, giving you the bullish aspect and not just the bullish aspect, but what the chart speaks here and what we should be looking for, okay? So remember, it's not a bias. It's more of what the chart is saying and the way that it, we should be looking for if that's the way that it's going to go. Uh, so remember, we do need that pullback, okay? Uh, in order for us to confirm that we're bullish, we need to stay above or in between this piece right here. Okay, so that 37 all the way down to this 36, it's a good area to start building demand into the end of the year. And even if we go sideways, like, you know, all year and kind of just stay here and close above like 30, 38, we should be okay. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to hit that 4K. 4K can come in, in by February or January. Like, it, it doesn't matter when. Okay, uh, the fact is that we're going to build a demand. Uh, tech is on some critical levels right now all across the board. And we have our needs this week and we have our needs this season, um, this quarter. So just be aware, right? Take it day by day, guys. Don't come in here saying that we're going to come hit bullish in the next two weeks. Okay, uh, don't say we're going to start, you know, going bearish to uh, this 3K or th uh, 32. Uh, until that happens, sit patiently, you know, trade accordingly. and uh, position yourself accordingly to what the break of level is, right? Whether you're bullish or bearish, don't matter. Uh, if there's more green, then you should be in calls. If there's more red, you should be in puts, right? Plain and simple. So that's my quick breakdown on forward slash ES, guys. Um, giving you that perspective on that and uh, up to you guys to uh, do some more research and um, just kind of uh, set some levels, set some alerts and understand what's happening within the charts, okay? <clears throat> All right, so another thing I want to point out is the VIX, all right? Uh, the VIX is known as a fear index, okay? It's not something that can be charted. It's something that can be uh, understood as characteristics. Characteristics is basically uh, the way that the, the fear is reacting to uh, the previous catalyst, right? So number one, uh, why did we spike up uh, right here, okay? Uh, most people are going to say, oh, yeah, like imagine if, imagine if you were to chart this, right? Let's just do this, okay? Somebody's going to have this chart, and they're going to say the breakout. They're going to say target 85.47. That's impossible, okay? The only way that we will get there, it's literally if we go to freaking war with China tomorrow, okay? Um, and, and it'll create some havoc and some crazy fear, right? Maybe we may go above that. We may hit 100. Like, who knows? But Technically, on a uh, on a pattern point of view, if this were to break above, technically your target is the top. Okay, so it's the previous high. This becomes your target. So technically, the way that I'm pointing out this to you guys is so you understand that we cannot chart fear. Okay, fear is not charted. You can't put a level on fear. Fear has been uh, in the market for a very long time. Uh, basically by the beginning of the year. All right, now let me show you something, right? This is the beginning of the year right here, okay? Uh, you can say that this is your demand, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna chart this for you guys just to give you guys a little perspective, a little enlightenment. From 20, we ran all the way to that 38.92. Very, very high. Did we hold? The answer is no. Do we keep rejecting up there? Do we make a higher high? The answer is no. The answer is yes on the rejection, 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 rejection. And we're finally there again, okay? Had we been able to chart this, this chart would have broken above that 36, 37, 38, and 40, okay? We would have been a lot higher if we were able to chart this. In this case, what I'm showing you guys is the reaction um, and the characteristics that these levels in general are levels that cannot be broken based on the previous catalyst that we've been having, okay? Um, <laughs> there hasn't been a reason why we break above or trade above it. Uh, and, and now if you wanna compare it with the market, where are we in the market? We're, we're at a retest level where we're showing some green candles and now the volatility is dying down, 
Is there still volatility in the markets? Yes, but it's not as aggressive as, as people say that it is. The VIX is what tells you where the fear is and the volatility is, okay? This cannot be used on a day-to-day -day basis comparing with the market because every day there is no major catalyst. The VIX should only be used on days where there is a major catalyst in order for you to see if there's a sell-off or an aggressive buying pressure. If there's an aggressive buying pressure, there's a higher probability that the VIX will go red that day, just that day. If there's a, a huge sell-off in the markets, then there's a higher probability that the VIX will go green on that day. Regardless, as of right now, as of throughout the year, we haven't been above that 35. And this 30 level, okay, has been areas where we kind of just been slowing down in the markets. So the catalyst is not big enough for us to break above 35 just yet. No new catalyst this year has has made the VIX break above 35. So these levels that I'm showing you are characteristics of fear slowing down at those specific levels along with the markets trending back up, giving you those green candles. This is still going trending down. Why is the VIX not trending up, okay? That's why I'm saying VIX cannot be charted, okay? To those who are charting out there, Good luck, but just giving you guys a heads up on why you cannot chart it, okay? So um, just wanted to give you that. Uh, also let you know where the market is, all right? Be aware that this can change if we have and receive a new economical catalyst that can cause more fear in the market. And then you'll see the break above 35, and then people will be talking about 40, 45, and 50. In that case, I don't think that'll happen this year, guys. Um, don't take my word for it, but definitely go look at those characteristics and understand what's happening based on the charts and the, uh, the economy around you. Okay. So I'll leave you guys with that. Uh, hopefully that provides a little more value and insight for you guys and a little more knowledge as for your trading skills and, uh, journey and your growth, uh, for, you know, future wise. Um, so I'll leave you with that. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is NQ. NQ, like I want you to check out this chart, this weekly time frame, right? Just what I said earlier, uh, we're looking for accumulation, we're looking for public participation phase, and we're looking for distribution. Uh, the bigger the accumulation, the better it is, and, that, and that's why you see these two yellow boxes right here. This is the only piece where we kind of traded sideways before another run-up. Other than that, it's been just trending up on a uh, staircase pattern, a public participation phase. From this level, where we're at right now, that 11, that 11, uh, I think it's 1090 to 11. Um, below that, we were down to this 8K right here. Look at this. This is the previous base that we had before we started running up again. Okay. So here we traded sideways for quite some time. So from 422 all the way down to 1028, um, we went sideways, traded sideways, built accumulation, and then created that pop, came right back down for COVID, snapped back inside, slowed down right here, uh, right in this area, and then ran up again. And then now we're right here. We have that nice green, red candle the previous week. And then this week we have a nice solid green. So it's a snapback candle. A snapback candle is like, a, the way you want to think about it is a trampoline, right? What happens when you when you come down a trampoline? You You drop down, right? So you basically... Uh, you're coming down into the trampoline, okay, just like this, and you land on the trampoline, and then what happens when you land on it? You snap back, right? It's an instant um, snap back. So that's the way that I can um, explain it to you guys so you understand it. It's a snap back candle, okay? All right, let's take that off. So that snap back candle came back inside its demand. Now, what do we look for now, right? Uh, if you look in general across the board with tech, a lot of tech has that solid green candle, that solid weekly candle uh, all across the board. The, the sectors that are beat down the most are the chip sectors uh, that's part of tech. So what's going to happen is this ER is going to bring a lot of volatility, but I, I'm, I'm hoping that it does bring some volatility, some up and down movement, uh, because what I want to see this next candle do 
is I wanted to drop uh, maybe like halfway into that uh, this candle here and then just come back inside and create like a doji in here or a hammer um, or, or maybe a nice uh, red to green type thing. Okay, I wanted to bring a nice candle. Regardless from the beginning, I want to see the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at least go red. Thursday, Friday go green. That's what I would love to see. I don't want to see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday green, Thursday, Friday red. I want to see the beginning go red, drop down, retest, and then have that proper play into the uh, upside like that. That's the only thing that will create a nice bullish momentum if a lot of the earnings this week go bullish versus bearish. Okay, Not saying that they're all going to be. Uh, not saying that they're all going to um, uh, not be. But the overall balance of them all should be a, a, a green reaction. Whether they beat or whether they, they miss, it should be overall green reaction, okay? You guys know that even, even if the stock miss uh, earnings, sometimes they pump up. Even if they beat, sometimes they drop down to the floor, guys. And that's the point of uh, earnings. It's a 100% lotto, whether you're in calls or puts, 100% lotto. Um, so that's what I want to look for uh, for NQ. I think this is a major level, that 11 or 1090 to 11. Um, and, and then take it day by day, okay, guys? Uh, but just be aware that we're at a major level. Uh, if we start trading below that 11 or that 1090, then it's going to be a nice free fall, basically down to this 8K. Okay? <laughs> um, so it's uh, there. There's no demand here whatsoever. Just just an FYI. All right, keep that in mind. All right. So now I'm just going to give you a few more tickers. I think that was enough uh, information on that. Hopefully you guys caught on, and hopefully you guys can go do some research on your own or. Throw it out the window, one ear out the other, and ignore everything that I said, and just look at some of the setups that are incoming, right? Uh, if you made it this far, then congratulations. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's go check out some of these charts that I have. Let me just pull them up real quick. Uh, so for the first one that I have here, it's going to be Target. Uh, the Target's in a great spot right now. Um, so I'm looking for a bullish mo uh, movement here. As long as we can stay over 158, uh, I think a, a good dip buy on Monday. If we show some, if we show some slowdown in selling, um, we can buy the dip at 158 with the stop loss at like 157. Keep it very simple, uh, and then just ride it above 161. Okay, uh, the, these levels right here is going to be a level to break and hold. <clears throat> As you can see, the uh, resistance right here is going to be at 161, 16090. Um, so I'm going to look for a bullish momentum here for Target because it based out down here and it's looking for a nice move up. So the next one is going to be AMD. Now this one has uh, earnings coming up next week. Uh, but either way, regardless, over that 60 level, I think it can continue above all the way into that 63.50 and 64. Keep that in mind. I think that's the move that a lot of people are going to look for, okay? Very simple here. Or if you just want to buy the dip down here at this like 56 and 56.50, uh, then that'll make sense. And then your stop loss can literally be 55.50, okay? Very simple trade here for uh, AMD. Uh, the next one is going to be TSM. TSM has a nice pattern. It's been trending down. Um, so I, I'm literally just looking for the break of this pattern. Whether we come below 62.30 or above that 64, I'm going to go long over 64 or below that 62. If we hold in between on the pre-market levels and the market is on a healthy condition, then I'll for sure look for a dip buy. But otherwise, over 64 is the pattern break, and I'm looking for that high of 67. But I'm going to target 65, uh, 66, and 67 high, OK? That's kind of what I'm targeting by the end of the week if we do break above on a bullish note, OK? Uh, the next one is going to be NVIDIA. As you guys can see, a lot of these are uh, chips. Uh, these are beat down the most, and they have the best uh, risk to reward right now even though they're feeling a lot of economical downturns and struggles. NVIDIA over 125, solid 125. Uh, we're going to be looking for 127 confirmation, 130, and 132.80. Um, otherwise, buy the dip down here at this like 120, 
I think the 120 can be a dip buy if we do hit this trend line here. So let's just say we drop down on Monday and we hold pre-market here. It's going to have a nice pop to the top like that, or it's literally just going to break above. Okay. So keep this one on uh, alert as well. Uh, the next one is going to be some banks. Uh, we're going to look at financials. Um, after searching all the financials, they all look amazing. Uh, they all had great earnings and they're all at great risk to reward place. So this one is a slower mover, good for any size accounts out there, small or big. Uh, either if you have a big account, you can load up on, you know, hundreds of these contracts. If you're on a small account, you can load up to like one or two. Uh, I like it over 44.30 uh, and 44.60, okay? Uh, these are the levels to break above just because this has been a resistance, resistance, and we're right here, we closed inside of it. Most of the time when we close in uh, supply, Usually the next day it shows a nice uh, rejection, but can also show a sign of strength and break above that day with the retest the next day and then continuation the next like a uh, few days, okay? Kind of like that, build a little staircase pattern. So it can be a nice swing over 44.50. Just trail it every 50 cents or 30 cents just because it's a smaller mover. Um, it can definitely bring in some uh, good percentages. So uh, this is probably gonna be my top play because it's a low risk. Uh, especially for those of you who have uh, work and don't have a lot of time to monitor, you can literally enter a small position here and take that risk over for, at 44 and then just let it do its thing. Just make sure you buy some time, okay? Uh, the next ticker is going to be ZM. Um, awkwardly enough, um, I, I, I really don't like this, uh, this company whatsoever, uh, but I am using the Zoom right now to make this recording, which is funny. Uh, but... The chart right here, if you want to look at it, it almost looks like it's doing a, it, it's curling, okay? So see, it's curling. Okay, this is why it has my attention. Now, um, it could get a little of attention. Um, it probably could just reject again, uh, but I'm just looking for a quick day trade. Um, I want to enter a, uh, a call play like around this uh, 79 or even 80, okay? 79 or 80 can be used as entry points for call plays. Um, and then I want to target at least the 82 breaks right here and the, uh, target the 84 on a good run. That's kind of like what I'm betting on, all right? Uh, using this trend line to use as a support and uh, continue its curl up movements. That's it for ZM, right? Very simple, uh, nothing too crazy. Um, just a simple trade, okay? Uh, the next one is going to be HD. I think HD is in a good spot on the weekly time frame. Is also in a great spot right here just to be considering uh, call plays. It's holding this demand, um, even though we're still red. <clears throat> uh, the spreads are a little wide, so you just got to be careful when trading this. The cool thing about this is that it did build a little demand here uh, all this year, and we kind of held. We bounced on Friday, we held green, and I think we kind of like gapped up a little bit. Um, but I think over like this 275, I'm gonna give you a solid number, 275. I'm looking for a call play all the way into like this 282, even as high as 285, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> of course, only with the, a bullish, um, bullish week, bullish sentiment, right? Um, HD sometimes does what it does, uh, HD, cat, and low. These three names are just sometimes doing their own thing. Whether we have a green market or red market, they'll do their own thing, uh, upside or downside movement. So uh, keep this one on on radar, right? Um, so the next thing, uh, I gave you guys a, a bunch of tickers right now, HD, ZM, C, NVIDIA, TSM, uh, AMD, and Target. And I broke down the market for you guys. Uh, again, totally up to you guys to do some of that research, guys. I, I think it's very important to understand like what's going on around you, um, but also um, knowing when is the right time to pay attention to it and knowing when it's not the right time, okay? Uh, there's the time and place for everything. There's fluctuations. There's adjustments uh, in the market in general on so many levels, and uh, it's just our job to uh, stay up to date. The next one is going to be SQ. Uh, SQ, I'm actually in this uh, swing play already. Uh, if you guys don't know, I did post it in a couple channels out there. And uh, even on Instagram, a conservative collector. Uh, we mentioned it here, uh, I believe last week. Yes. And then today, I, uh, Friday, I found an entry 
down here at 54. Uh, so I waited, uh, even though this was a good entry point up here, uh, being red for a day or whatever, uh, wouldn't be hurting too much because buying time on contract, they did the kill you that bad. Uh, but at 54, I bought it down here and then it closed at like 25 to 30%, I believe it was. Um, so keep in mind that SQ is trading sideways right now. Uh, so far, it's been trading sideways on a lot of these and it's been popping down. It tries to pop up sometimes. Uh, we get those run-ups, but then it doesn't hold. Either way, I, I think the risk to reward just makes sense for me. Uh, confirmation would be over 57, 58, all the way to 60 and as high as 62, 50, okay? Right here, basically the top of that. So I'm looking for a good swing. I'm, I'm really uh, excited to see how this plays out, whether we break above this week or not. Uh, I am probably gonna continue to hold my contract because I got like a month, a month contract out. Um, and then I'm gonna take some day trades in between uh, just so I can make that money to pay for the swing so I don't have to stress about that swing in itself. Now, if you're up at like 30 to 40%, then I recommend just try putting a trail stop at 30% or 40%. If it goes above that, just move your trail stop up to 50, 60, 70, 80, uh, and so on and so forth. But yeah, keep in mind, uh, keep this on high alert. It's in this range right now, and it's amazing. Uh, the minute it starts to break out, it can create a nice little bull run and you can make some good money to the upside uh, or to the downside on the break below 54 uh, and just write about down to 51, 50, 49, 48, wherever it wants to drop. If it wants to drop into a penny stock, then that's cool too. We'll write it to the downside. But for now, we're holding the call side and uh, we're hoping for a break. Uh, other than that, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this week. You guys have an amazing week. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to DM us at Conservative Collectors. We can do what we can to help you. Uh, we like to assist all kinds of accounts there with Jay. Um, Jack does some freaking solid um, day trades with Gabe. Gabe also does swing trades. And then uh, Jay, of course, does these small account plays uh, where he's been rocking out some SPWR. Uh, he's been rocking out some Tesla, some Twitter puts. I mean, he's been rocking out some solid plays lately. And if you guys don't follow him, follow him on uh, Twitter on Twitter as well. Uh, his name is I Post Signals. Uh, and he's on there, so you guys can literally just follow him and uh, follow his plays to check him out. Uh, a lot of great TA as well on uh, SPY analysis. Uh, he's an amazing trader, so keep you guys informed. So hopefully I get to see you guys in there. If you guys have questions, just tag me in that chat. Uh, I'm in Conservative Collectors, just chilling with y'all. And uh, yeah, let us know how we can help you and further assist you. Uh, if you guys need help with a one-on-one -on -one and you're part of Conservative Collectors, hit me up. Definitely do a one-on-one -on -one with you if you need it, right? Um, other than that, uh, you guys stay green, manage your risk properly, and don't blow your accounts, guys. Cool. Uh, catch you on the next one.